that the Lord was with us. So we're going to start this morning with a hymn of praise. Amen. Let us rejoice. Oh, yeah. Jesus, because you, you're the one I love. How great! Yeah, it's our God. See me. Yeah, it's our God. My God. Oh, we'll see Your how God. great. Say, who is how the great Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Our God. Right here this morning. You're the name. You're the. My God. Yes. Yeah. You are worthy, yeah. And my heart, how great is our God. Jesus, cause you, you're the one I love. You're the one I need. You're the one I see. Come on, we Jesus, you. You are worthy of. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. In my all we how great walk in this morning is our God. Come on, say it again. You're the name. You're my great all name. Yes, you are God. worthy yes, of Lord. our praise. Hallelujah. Come on, God. And Come my heart will see. Here this morning, Lord. We welcome you in this place. Thank you, Lord. Come on, how great. How great. It's our God. Sing with me, how great. It's our God. All will see how great. How great. It's our God. Come on, we just want to hear your voice. How great! Check one. Come on, Jesus, cause you, yes. you're the one that gives your all. You're the one I always call. Yes. When I need you, make everything stop. Finally, I got your love on top. Jesus, love you're the one that I love. You're the one I need. You're the one I see. Yes. Come on, Jesus, cause you, you're the one that gives your all. You're the one I always call. I need you make everything stop. Finally, I got oh, your love Spirit. on top. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. Don't you just feel like Check one. 
Don't you just feel like praising the Lord? I think about all of the sick, the persons that we know now are deceased. You all remember Miss Thelma that used to sit right here on that second row? Well, she's gone on home. But when she was alive, she stood up right there and she praised the Lord. You know, we praise the Lord because he's so good. You're not showing off because you rock a little bit, because you shout a little bit. You're just thankful. You don't hear something about joy. Have you ever watched the commercials where the people win the lottery? They jump up, they do a flip because they happy. Well, God is our lottery when he woke us up this morning. And every time something happened to me and I see my life flash before me, and then God brings me back, this is where I am. I be excited thinking about what God has done. And when I ask you to raise your hand, you're not raising them to me. You're raising them to the Lord. You're just letting God know, hey, look at me. I'm here this morning. I'm going to keep on saying And one day you're going to understand what I mean about raising them hands. But God is good. Thank you. You may be seated, please. This morning, the New Testament gospel, we want you to stand for it. It's going to be read by uh, Minister Felder, Matthew, the 10th chapter, 24th through the 39th verses. Good morning, my name is Noel Felder. And I will be reading Matthew 10th chapter, verse 24 through 39. A student doesn't get a better desk than her teacher. A laborer doesn't make more money than his boss. Be content, pleased, even when you, my students, my harvest hands, get the same treatment I get. If they call me the master, don't face, what can the workers expect? Don't be intimidated. Eventually, everything is going to be out in the open, and everyone will know how things really are. So don't hesitate to go public now. Don't be bluffed into silence by the threats of bullies. There's nothing they can do to your soul, your core being. Save your fear for God, who holds your entire life, body, and soul in his hands. What's the price of a pet canary? Canary. Some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to it, even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you down to the last detail, even numbering the, the hairs on your head. So don't be intimidated by all this bully talk. You're worth more than a million canaries. Canaries. <laughs> stand up for me against world opinion, and I'll stand up for you, for you before my Father in heaven. If if you turn tail and run, do you think I'll cover for you? Don't think I've come to make life cozy. I've come to cut, make a sharp knife cut between son and father, daughter and mother, bride and mother-in-law. Cut through these cozy domestic arrangements and free you 
for God, well-meaning family members can be your worst enemies. If, if you prefer father or mother over me, you don't deserve me. If you prefer son or daughter over me, you don't deserve me. If you don't go all the way with me through thick and thin, you don't deserve me. If your, if your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. This is the word of the Lord. so much. You know, the fourth Sunday, the fourth Sunday is usually our Sunday for our children. Well, it seems like we have less attendance on that Sunday. But see, remember, I did try to do a sermon on feeding the sheep and the lambs. And these uh, little children are the lambs, and we got to feed them. We got to spiritually feed them. And so when we come bring our bodies to the church. They see us. We're their examples. They're, sometimes we might be the only example that they get outside, you know, going when they're in the malls and stuff. But when they see us every Sunday, you know, wouldn't it be nice if it was filled and the children could look back and say, look at all these people, you know, this morning. This morning, we're going to pray this morning. Uh, we are going to ask the Lord for some favors this morning. We are going to ask God for a healing this morning. We are going to thank God this morning. We are <laughs> going to ask God for forgiveness this morning. And we might even dance a little bit. We might shout a little bit, but that's up to the spirit that's within you because the spirit is what moves us. It moves, and I'm going to call in the Holy Ghost this morning because, see, we are already filled with the Holy Spirit. We just have to activate it. That's all. And call in on the spirit because, see, we got some things that need to be taken care of. We waited a long time because that's what we're supposed to do is call on the Lord and just wait. And don't pray. And you know, I understand that we're supposed to have joy in the midst of sorrow. I got some sorrow too. I got some pain too. But you might not know it by the way I was up here dancing. Because I dance, because I have legs to dance with. I raise my hands because I have hands. I don't know if you know the uh, young uh, white guy that was born without hands and feet. And he does sermons. His name is Nikovich, if you want to Google that. He preaches, he preaches on a table like the, and he twists around. And he said, I always used to pray for feet and arms. But let me tell you something, you don't have to pray for feet and legs and arms because you got them. And he preaches that because he wants people to know that you got to praise God no matter what the situation is. And that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to ask God to do some things uh, that we've been wanting to happen, not just for yourself, but for everyone we're going to be praying. We have healing needs. We have mental needs on how to forgive each other. You know, sometimes when you get so angry with each other, we won't even speak to each other. Or if we know some particular person is on the program, we won't come to church that Sunday because we don't want to hear them sing or preach or whatever. We got to stop being that way. And you're wondering why I'm talking like that this morning? Because 
I ask God, what, what do you want me to say this morning? That's what God say. God says to me that our hearts have waxed cold. Waxed cold. That means you can get angry and look at somebody who won't even speak. Turn your head. And that's a brother in the church, a sister in the church. That's not right, folks. My sisters and brothers online, I hope you're listening. This is Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church in Jonesboro, Georgia. Our senior pastor is Donna Reed. We are a church of love. We are a church that will speak the truth. This morning, I invite you to come to the altar to lay your burden down if you have any. If you don't have any burdens or any needs, lay somebody else needs and burdens. This is an opportunity of life to get rid of whatever you're going through. It's prayer time, sisters and brothers. Come on out. Come on, this is a time. I remember when uh, Reverend Pollard was here. He came from the pulpit and he came in the front. And he said, God is so good. God has brought me so far. I'm going to talk about my journey this morning. He said, I don't care what you think. I'm going to talk about what God did for me. Because see, your testimony, sometimes it's a healing for someone else. It's a serious time. Mm. Oh, Lord, it's a serious time. Hallelujah this morning. Mm-hmm. My Lord, my Lord. Oh, Lord, I call upon you this morning. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You've been so good to me this morning. You've been so good to so many of us, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Lord, we glorify your name. Oh, you're the only one that can make changes, Lord, for us. Now you are, you're out here. Lord, we got so much to ask you for during this season of illness, deaths, and violence in our nation. But I still believe, God, that you've been good to us. Mm-hmm. I say it with a lot of fervor, a lot of strength, because when we've been weak, oh, Lord, you lift us up. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we come this morning, Lord, because we're grateful for this very moment. Oh, Lord, you allowed us to be here this morning one more time. Lord, we're on the spiritual journey this morning, Lord. Calling on you, Lord. And, Lord, we need you, Lord. Loose angels, Lord, in great abundance, Lord. Release those angels, Lord, into our homes, uh, our jobs. Oh, yes, Lord. Release them in our schools, in the White House, uh, in the jailhouse, all over this nation, Lord. Because I want, Lord, those angels, Lord, to force out, to drive out, and to cleanse our evil in the presence. Oh, Lord, so much more. Lord, I hope the angels are surrounding us this morning. And I hope the angels, Lord, are just hovering over us this morning. The angels is touching us this morning, whatever infirmities we have this morning. God, we need you more than we ever needed you before. God, we understand that the times are so bad until we feel like you're coming soon. I don't know. But we want to be ready, Lord. And whatever that's in us that's not clean and not pure and not of God, remove it today. Change us. Change us. Change our hearts. Our cold, wet heart. Let us be more loving and kind. God, help us to walk in your purpose that you created us for. In our homes, in our church, in our community. 
Lord, speak to our spirit right now. Let us have the wisdom that it takes to walk in your plan. I know you got a plan for each one of us. And those who are sitting in the pews that have not accepted their purpose, Lord, let them begin to think about their purpose on this Sunday morning. Lord, all around us, there's violence with guns. Give us protection, Lord, and keep us. God, sometimes we are fearful when we are out there in the shopping centers, even in the grocery stores, because we don't know who's going to get angry and start firing. God, help us not to be fearful. Will you cast out all fear? I know there are some that's looking around when we're out wondering, Lord, don't let nothing happen while we're out here today. God, will you put a hedge of protection over us? Not just the church people here today, Lord, but the ones listening, the ones in the nation, the ones in the city, the county. Oh, everyone, we need you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your word. You said you'll be with us until the end of times. And I don't believe, Lord, that it's the end. But I think, Lord, that you're giving us an opportunity to get it right. Some die and go on to glory because apparently they got it right and they're ready. I don't know, Lord, what your plan is for me. I don't know what your plan is for each and every one that's here at the altar. I don't know what your plan is, Lord, for those that sit in the pews. But I do know, Lord, that you got a plan for us. And God, you know, what I love about you, Lord, is that when we ask something in your name and you know it's right, you deliver. I can't think of one time that you didn't deliver something that I asked for that was not asked for in a righteous manner. So, Lord, right now, I want you, Lord, please, Lord, I want you to look at each and every one kneeling at this altar. They have a prayer request, Lord. God, I want you to look at everyone sitting in the congregation this morning, they too have a request. Lord, right now, I don't know what Jamila, my dear sweet child, is going through this morning after losing her mother. But I ask you, Lord, if you would strengthen her and, and that you would protect this child because she needs you, Lord. And Lord, let, let, let Jamila reach out to me or whoever she knows and say come on over and, 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 and just help me get this done. Help me get through this because I've lost my mom. God I'm asking you Lord that the ones that are on the homebound list that cannot come to church and I know who they are Lord. If they could come they would be here on the front row Will you touch their bodies this morning? Oh, Lord, will, will, you, will you put it in the mind of our church that we must support these children on the fourth Sunday? We must come in herds to let them know we believe in the Lord. You got to do the same thing. I'm praying, Lord, for a change. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask you to touch Reverend Cynthia Wilson Felder, a lady with an angel voice. Oh, she's been a little sick. But God, you're going to lift her up because you gave her a voice of an angel when she sings. Oh, it gives the world joy. Lift her up from her bed, Lord, and send her to Andrew Chapel and let her share that melodious voice that she got. She's been so sick. But God, you're the healer, and you know she's a minister of God, and she's not done with her music. Not yet. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for healing Jeremiah. 
our little son here this morning. He's here at church this morning. Praise the God. Lord, I ask you to strengthen his mother this morning. That whatever her dreams are, whatever her needs are, that you know she's a minister of God, that you'll be with her. And that you're just seeing so many blessings of her. It's just going to overflow you. Lord, bless these musicians. Thank you, Lord, for them. Bless their homes. God, I could just go on and on. But, Lord, you know what we need. And you said all we got to do is ask. And we have asked this morning. Oh, precious spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Come on up in here, Lord. Come on up in here. And Lord, we can have some testimonies on the first Sunday. Come on up in here. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. And we thank you. Amen. Sister Parker, Sister Stevens, good morning. Without you it would be fine So because I didn't listen You broke me down to get my attention Now I see that there's no other way So I stand right here with these words and say I'll go when you leave me, Lord, I'm sure to follow. Just say so. I'll go. Road ahead may be long or narrow. One thing I know, Lord, I'll go. You called my name and I kept on running. I would have hired when I heard you come. Didn't want to fit you into my time. Thought life without you, it would be fine. So because I didn't listen, you broke me down to get my attention. Now I see there was no other way So I stand right here with these words and say I'll go When you leave me, Lord, I'm sure to follow Just say so I'll go Lord, on hair may be long, dark, and narrow
follow God. Just say so, and I'll go. The road ahead may be long, dark, and narrow. Yes. One thing I know, Lord, I'll go. Yes, Lord. Do y'all know what that song says? Has anybody ever said yes to Jesus? Amen. Have you had to say yes when you didn't want to? Uh, yeah, there are times where I didn't want to say yes. Yeah. I said, God, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Father, I don't want to go through that. <laughs> I don't want to have to take care of that, whatever it is. And sometimes you got to go anyway with your head held high. You got to stand firm on the word of the Lord. And you got to move forward. I'm moving forward trusting God today even though we don't have any kids right now. Are y'all trusting God with me on that? We know that right now this generation needs Jesus. Because everybody's so quick to get angry. Everybody's so quick to jump to conclusions. We nosy. We gossip. Come on, tell your neighbor, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? But we want to pray for each other right now. We want to stand firm on the word. Amen? You might have lost some loved ones. Shoot, there's no kids right now. I'm going to stand firm on the word of God because God is going to bring them back. Yeah. We need God in this generation. I can't stress it more today than ever. How many of y'all have been to the grocery store lately? Have you seen the prices? Have you bought some eggs or some milk? Did your groceries come up to over $100 when they used to be about $20, $30? Yeah, did the doctor tell you that you weren't sure, they weren't sure how long that situation was going to last you? Are your kids not listening <laughs> and acting a fool in church? Amen. Sit back and turn around and be quiet. So all of these things, you have to continue to stand firm on the word of God. Amen. 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 And this song right here, the kids sing all the time, but I'm going to sing it for you. down to the sun weight on my shoulders bullet in my gun oh I got eyes in the back of my head just in case I have to run Do what I can when I can while I can for my people. When the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night, that's why I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, you hear free. Calling, calling me to answer. 
gonna keep on keeping on. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> Would you share it? He did something for me. I'm always out at the shopping centers. And I was out a little late. And the light, the green arrow was on. But before I could get to the light, it changed and a large truck was coming before me. Yeah. And I stopped, I wasn't gonna turn in front of the truck, but as I stopped, someone behind me came from behind me so fast at the light. And he came to the left of me in the front of my car and he met the truck and the truck went to the right if there had been a collision right there, I probably wouldn't even be here this morning because that truck and that car would have come into my car. I don't need to be out there at night at the shopping centers. But anything can happen. But it's a testimony that nothing did happen. I'm here this morning. And I don't, mind, I don't mind sharing my personals because it might help someone. 
sometimes when my birthday comes and it's on a Sunday, you might not see me here. Because on that Sunday, I want to jump up and shout. So I might go somewhere where everybody's jumping and shouting about something. <laughs> I'm just being honest this morning. I'm just, I go somewhere where folks be hollering, jumping, on, screaming. Man. Somebody may fall on the floor. But it's my birthday. I do what I want to on my birthday. <laughs> Go ahead. If you don't shout with me, that's all right, baby. <laughs> I'll shout by myself. <laughs> because I got some legs to shout with. Mm -hmm. yeah. I um, went by the nursing home to see someone. Mm. Mm. They can't talk. They're they not old. They can't do anything but sit there and be fed. Somebody have to feed them. Somebody have to change their diaper. They're not in any pain, they say. But can you imagine? If that was you. And you don't know, it might end up being you. But today it isn't you. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And I look at myself and I look at you and I just, it would be wrong if I didn't say anything today. We're going to bring on the message. I'm not supposed to be giving the message. The reverend is. We're going to have him come up, Reverend Douglas Childers. will give you the desire of your life. He may not give it to you when you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s. But if you keep trusting, and God will give you those desires. And my testimony this morning is that God gave me a desire that I have had from a little girl from the age of probably 10 or 11. When I was growing up, I always wanted to play a piano. But my parents, they had nine kids. They couldn't afford to give me a teacher. So what I did, and I'm not gonna take this long, too long, they would give me my lunch money. I wouldn't spend my lunch money on lunch. I saved my little nickels and dimes and bought me a keyboard, an organ keyboard. And I would play, try to play a song by the numbers. So after I grew up and got grown, that desire was still a burning in my heart. It was always a dream. So when I grew up, I decided I'm going to do this. I don't care how old I am when I do it. And I kept asking God, you know, I kept running away from it. You know, we run away from a lot of things yeah. in life. But I came back to this desire. So God always put somebody in your life that notice you and you don't know who that person may be. So yesterday, for the first time, I had the opportunity to play in front of a group of people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Nice throw. I played my first song in front of my choir members at a prayer breakfast, at a prayer breakfast. And my song that I played that my teacher, Miss Phyllis Beadle, taught me was, it is well, it is well with my soul. Yeah. And at this time, I am well. I am well with my soul. And I thank God for all of it. Thank you, my sweet sister. Oh, we're going to also hear from, it's about 10, 17. We got a little time. Minister Zeke. He's a minister of music. Okay, uh, we thank God for life, health, and strength. And remembering the re bereavement here, Miss Holder, and of course on, well lately I've been having quite a few deaths in my family, but yesterday my nephew, we had his home going services in Thomasville, Georgia, and it was a little late when it started four o'clock because they had two other funerals before then and it was a little late last night but I'm here today but I thank you all for your prayers and support you know of for me and it was a beautiful service and as always all my family I always say something to end it with a little little song and uh, we had a standing ovation and it was such a beautiful Beautiful home going celebration, and I thank you all for your support. Thank you so much as a family. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I know y'all have heard from me enough today, but I just wanted to, uh, to lift up my mom. She has been a testimony. Um, she is 73, and she has had back surgery and a few setbacks. And I just want y'all to know that, um, you know, when, you, when you're a little older and you're having to deal with health challenges, I know that it can be very frustrating. Mm -hmm. It can be very challenging. And just, it's hard to verbalize that to other people. Mm -hmm. And I just want to lift her up today, actually, amongst all of you. Her name is Cynthia Wilson. And I also want to pray for all of you who have lost loved ones and all of you who have children right now out here in the world, because I've already said it before, this generation needs Jesus, but there's a lot of things going out, going on in the world that are com keeping us from being great. And um, yeah, just, I just want to pray for those who are struggling. I want to pray for those who are sick. I want to pray for those who are caregivers, mm -hmm. who are caring for others, mm -hmm. those who are caring for children. I want to lift all of that up right now. Mm -hmm. But I also want to speak to you and your dream that you just share with us. And we have the opportunity for everybody who wants to fulfill that dream coming up. We're getting ready to teach lessons here at the church. Okay. So if you have that dream for yourself, it is my dream to help others. So I'm just putting my dream out there right now. Mm -hmm. I want to start helping other people learn how to sit right here mm -hmm. and right there and right here and behind the drums. If you have a dream of music or even singing, mm -hmm. we want to help you with that. So you keep going and you keep being an inspiration to everybody else. And if you have a desire to do that as well, Mr. Zeke has been reaching out. He's getting ready to bring y'all an album, y'all. All right. Mr. Zeke got a whole album of songs. And who knows, you'll be, you'll be playing for him. You might be accompanying him. We never know. There are things that you can do and it's never too late. You're not too old, you're not too young. I wanna encourage you all to step out and do new things, okay? Amen. Amen, thank you. Uh, could you, 
tell them the name of those three songs that your mother sings that's out on the YouTube. <laughs> she has, I'm telling, she has a voice like an angel. Her mother really does. Reverend Cynthia Wilson Felder. One is, Give Me Jesus. And she says on there, she said, you can have the world. She said, but just give me Jesus. And when she sing that song, Lord have mercy, just pull it up on YouTube and listen to her. And then she sings one, uh, I love Jesus. I, I told Jesus. I told Jesus. And one thing I want you to sing it. And Jesus loves me. And Jesus loves me. And I have pulled that song up so many times to hear her. I mean, her song will bless you. Just pull it up and see what I say. You're going to say, you know, she said a lot today. I didn't like what I like what she said about that. <laughs> okay, Reverend, please come. Walk around again. Greet you in the name of He who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And we count it a blessing to be here today to share in this time of worship with you. I want to thank you for your kindness, your generosity, your hospitality. Uh, when I was here doing my practicum for my uh, doctoral degree, you're very kind, and, uh, and I just want to thank you, and I especially want to express my appreciation to uh, your pastor my, and my friend, Reverend Brother Donald Reed. I'm grateful for Dr. Warren and uh, for her leadership this morning, and I invite you now, if you will, to... If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like to look at uh, the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and I want to just read one verse of scripture from that chapter, uh, verse number 16, where we find these words recorded. I will lead the blind by a road they do not know, by path they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I will do, and I will not forsake them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Amen. I want to use as a topic for the message I've prepared for today, guide it through darkness. Guide it through darkness. God, God wants to lead us on life's journey because of the love that God has for us. But sometimes we fail to show our gratitude. Sometimes we stumble through life like blind men and women. But even in our state of mental blindness, God's love is present. And God wants to guide us through darkness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Through the voice of Isaiah, God says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. God isn't only speaking to those who are physically blind. God is also talking to those blind because of their reluctance to do what is morally and ethically right. 
men and women, boys and girls, who have sight but walk in darkness as though they are blind. Isaiah speaks of God's desire to turn darkness into light. Consider this thought as an example of individuals walking in darkness. Members of the United States Congress were elected to serve Americans, but the Congress does not function as it should. Members of the Congress grope through Capitol Hill like blind men and women. Amen, somebody. They are blind in their judgment. They are incapable of working with their colleagues. They choose instead to make their co-workers their political foes. They point fingers and blame one another for ethical violations when they should be looking for common ground to work together for the good of the country. This country has many problems to solve, and these leaders need to open their eyes to solve them. So there are three things that I believe God is directing us to do this morning. God wants us to stay woke, to acknowledge change occur in our world, and know that blindness flees from Christ. Woke is an important word. It has become part of America's lexicon. The term woke is an adjective derived from African-American vernacular English. It means staying alert to racial prejudice and discrimination. It's another way of saying we should not walk like blind men and women, unaware of what's happening in our community or world. But we should be aware of what's happening around us. When an individual is woke, they realize something wicked and destructive has been brewing in America for more than 300 years. It is a phenomenon one can observe when their eyes are open. It works against marginalized people and has brought significant harm to African Americans. Like cancer, it has slowly infected and caused pain and discomfort to its victims. And for this reason, my brothers and sisters, we must stay woke. The corporate I'm speaking of has a name. Its name is whiteness. Amen, somebody. But whiteness is not real. Whiteness is a social construct, a perverted curse that has developed over the years through the manipulation of power and abuse caused by white men. Although whiteness works to the benefit of white people, it has unfortunately caused many white people not to appreciate their shared connection with humanity. The acceptance of whiteness thrives best when it is allowed to discriminate against others, those it chooses to place in a subordinate role. In America, this position has been thrust upon black people. This is why we must stay woke. Many of the ideas America used for the building of our grand civilization were derived from the ancient Greeks and Romans. However, 
race was never a factor in the culture of the ancient Greco-Roman world. On the other hand, Aristotle, the prince of Western philosophical thought, had negative ideas about blackness. He believed that blackness was an evil or dangerous nature and argued that the climate where people live determine their physical, intellectual, and moral characteristic. Aristotle's thinking helped to strengthen the birth of whiteness and the evil it provoked in America. So my brothers and sisters, we must stay woke. Our failure to stay woke is like being blind. It differs only because it is a blindness of the mind rather than the eyes. We must stay woke because people who support whiteness will do us harm. In 2022, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill known as the Stop Woke Act. This bill prohibits the teaching of specific concepts or ideas about race. You see, those who support whiteness want to shield their children from the destructive past it has created. Although some people want to live in a country where people can exist without the burden of discrimination, Blindness in America has prevented us from achieving this worthy goal. The second thing we must do if we are to avoid spiritual blindness is acknowledge change happens in our world. Several years ago, I saw a movie called Water World. This movie told the story of a future time when polar ice caps melted and the earth is entirely submerged by water. As I watched the movie, I thought it is only another science fiction movie. But today, as I think of it, I realize the challenges of climate change. Climate change is real, and the challenges we face because of it are real. If climate change is not stopped, we will see more damage done to this beautiful earth we call home. Humans carelessly emit chemicals into the atmosphere that destroy the Earth's ozone. So it's not far-fetched to imagine a time when the land of our world, with its beautifully dotted cities dressed in lights, may become the victim of a deluge because of our blindness. We have all seen images of families surveying the destruction caused by severe weather, children with tears in their eyes, realizing a beloved pet is gone, M mothers and fathers sadly accepting that they have been made homeless. Still, as a society, we struggle with the idea of climate change, even though we see it happening all around us. Jesus said, when evening comes, you will say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign. Still, none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. And when we talk about the sign of Jonah, we're talking about 
Christ's resurrection. COVID-19 was initially discovered in late 2019, and it quickly became part of the conversation in the United States when the Center for Disease Control and Prevention alerted the nation of its outbreak in January of 2020. Yet there was a polarization of American citizens to accept the seriousness of COVID-19. Wearing masks and taking the vaccine became a political football for Americans. And consequently, millions of lives were lost because of this tragic pandemic. Several years ago, I visited the island of Barbados on vacation. While there, I visited Harrison's cave. The cave showcased a unique phenomenon of nature through a fantastic gallery of stalactites, a deposit of calcium carbonate, and resembling icicles that hang from the roof of the cave. But the thing that really affected me during that particular tour of Harrison Cave was the moment that the tour guide invited us to consider how dark it must have been in that cave when those workers, those early workers, were excavating the cave. And he asked for our permission to turn the lights off to demonstrate how dark it was. And I must say to you that when he turned those lights off, I've never seen such darkness in my life. It was darker than dark, such darkness. And I want to suggest to us this morning that our world is a dark world, a world where so many things are happening that are detrimental to our future. And the only way that we can really rid ourselves of this darkness this spiritual darkness that has been cast over us is through Jesus Christ. And where Christ is, blindness cannot exist. Even if someone is physically blind, an encounter with Jesus Christ gives spiritual sight, and blindness must flee. The Bible tells the story of a blind man who was given sight by Jesus. And after healing one blind man, Jesus said to his disciples, I have come into this world that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. But there was another blind man that I want to say a word about. He knew that Jesus was a prophet. His name was Bartimaeus. He was a blind beggar. When Jesus and his disciples came through Bartimaeus' town on their way to Jericho, crowds gathered to see Jesus. But because of his blindness, Bartimaeus could not get close to the passing procession to get Jesus' attention. And since he couldn't see how to get there, Bartimaeus could do only one thing. He cried out. And he said, Lord, have mercy on me. But the crowd told him to, to be quiet. Hush. Stop whining. The master doesn't have time to be bothered with such as you. They didn't believe that the blind man deserved for Jesus to listen to him. But Bartimaeus refused to be quiet. He shouted 
even louder. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I realized that my life could be just a little bit better if you would just have mercy on me. And when Jesus heard him crying out, Jesus told his disciples to go and get him and bring him to me. And when he brought him to him, he, he blessed him with his vision. Whatever sense we have to use against darkness, we should use it. If it's our voice, use your voice. Whatever sense you have, if you can use it to force darkness to flee, use it. Whatever sense we have, we must use. We should be willing to tell whoever we meet on the street or in the marketplace who Jesus is. We ought to tell them that he's the one that the prophets of old spoke about. He's the one they referred to when they predicted his coming to guide us through darkness. We ought to tell them that he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a rose of Sharon. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's a rock in a weary land. He's the one who can help, help us evade the curse of darkness. And make no mistake about it, my brothers and sisters, all of us have got some dark moles to go through in our lives. And if you haven't yet gotten to a time when you see darkness in your life, just keep living. Just keep living and it will come to you too. All of us are going to have some sick days. All of us are going to have some trials in our life experience. All of us are going to have some setbacks. All of us are going to have to cry sometimes. But if you just keep Jesus Christ foremost in your heart and in your life, you'll be able to get through. Whatever trials, whatever trials, whatever struggles you may encounter, Jesus is the way. He's the means of getting you through your dark moments in life because God has already made the provisions for us to be guided through darkness. Amen? Amen. Amen. There may be someone here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as his or her Savior. You've been trying to do what needs to be done in your life by yourself. And every now and then you realize that you just don't have enough to get the job done. But there's one who can. There's one who can get you through it, spiritually, emotionally, physiologically. His name is Jesus. He's the son of the living God. He came that we might have life and that we might have life abundantly. God doesn't want you and I to stumble in the dark. God has made provisions for you and I to avoid the dark, to get out of the dark, to be guided through the dark. He's made those provisions through his son, Jesus Christ. And so if you're here and you've not yet accepted Christ in your life, I invite you to come as we open the doors of this church. Please come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Is there one who will come this morning? My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah 
belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Maybe you have accepted Christ already, but you find that sometimes you just feel that you can't go another day. You don't know how to get through the trials that you've got, and you need prayer. And you're willing to come and pray and ask God to strengthen and encourage you. If you're here and you want to come again to the altar and pray, we invite you. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord, belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord, belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. may be seated. Reverend, for that message. Thank you. We needed that this morning. I know I did. Now we're going to get ready for our tithes and our offerings this morning. Uh, Reverend Williams, would you come and offer a prayer and lift up the offering for us this morning, please? Lord, we just thank you this morning. Stand. For those who are watching with us at home, you may give your tithe and offer by sending, up, sending it to Angel Chapter United Methodist Church, 122 Wallace Street, or by making an appointment and coming by the church and dropping off a uh, late charnet. Oh, Heavenly Father. As we prepare to give a portion of that which you have already given to us, we ask that you increase it, take it, and bless it so it will be used for the reason that it was taken up for, for someone to help someone who is going through some type of trial and tribulation, for someone who need the light bill paid, the rent, the rent paid, or just need a hotel fee. We ask that you continue to bless us in a special way so we will be able to bless those in need in a special way. This is our servant prayer. We ask in our son, in Jesus' name, for Christ's sake, amen. have any announcements coming from the congregation this morning? Okay. As I mentioned Susan. earlier, we were... Hey, everybody. It's me again. <laughs> Listen, um, 
We're going to start having rehearsals for the children and the youth and the young adults. Just in case you're not sure what this Sunday is, it's children starting at ages what? What, what ages do the children start? Five, four, three, two. One, we'll I, take I, them all, I, really. Yeah. We'll take them all. You can it's bring the child mm -hmm. from the time they can talk. Right. Okay, from the time they can talk, that's the children's ministry up until age 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Ages 13 to 17 or 18-ish 18 18. are the youth. Young the young adults, mm -hmm. 18 mm -hmm. and up. 30. Anybody can consider themselves a young adult, okay? We're going to start rehearsing every week on Zoom, okay? I'm going to make that clear. We're going to start practicing every week on Zoom. Everybody say it. Every week on Zoom. Every week on Zoom. So that we can keep everybody involved and in the know. Also, um, I know that everybody can't make every rehearsal. It's not mandatory to come to every rehearsal. It's just so that you can get the information and you can go on about your week, your month, however it goes, and come and sing with us on Fourth Sunday, okay? So everyone is welcome to be a young adult. Wave your hand if you're a young adult. 18 and up. 18 and up, yes, yes. You don't have to be 20 or 30. You don't even have to be 40 or 50. You can be a young adult if you feel like you're a young adult, amen? Every Saturday at noon, we will be having rehearsal on Zoom. If you need rehearsal information, please come and see me. I'll give you my phone number, okay? Thank you. That is wonderful, wonderful, thank you. We also have, um, Another ministry for ages uh, three through eight uh, on Zoom on Saturday as well. Yes. And that's my sister, uh, Moore. Yes. And any child that can engage in that on Zoom, that's a wonderful thing. She's been doing that for a couple of years now, I think. Mm -hmm. So we got something already going yes, on. Yes, if you so. need that information, you can, you can see me for that too. I can mm -hmm. give you that Zoom information as well. All right, thank you. What a blessing. Okay, save the date. I want you all to be in prayer for our Reverend Reed and his wife. They are away this Sunday, but we are going to celebrate our pastor coming back to the church for another year. And it's going to be on here, it says the third Sunday, July the 16th. And I assume that it's going to uh, be the uh, follow. And this announcement is from our uh, president of our parish committee, uh, Ms. Angela Wall. So uh, put that on your calendar, July the 16th, after church. Uh, one Sunday, I think it was the fifth Sunday, we had a young man. He came to Andrew Chapman. He did the uh, prayer that morning. He had been away for a while, and he's been coming with his mother, usually on Sundays now. We had asked him to come and pray, so he started coming back to Andrew Chapel. His name is Kyle Ransom. Uh, he lives in Mara, Georgia. He sent us a letter of thank you, and he says, <clears throat> Dear Andrew Chapel, United Methodist Church, Thank you all so much for celebrating this milestone with me. Your love, kindness, and generosity will forever be appreciated. You know, when we had the graduation Sunday, he was a part of the service. Although he hadn't been here a lot, but we engaged him to come and serve with us on that Sunday. And we'd like to uh, thank the person over the uh, ministry, uh, Sister Willis, that headed that program on that Sunday. Also, I mentioned uh, Ms. Thelma Stracker Holder, um, the woman who passed Jamila's mother. The homecoming celebration for her will be on Saturday, July the 1st at 11 a.m. at Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church. Um, the visitation is on Friday, June the 30th from four to six. And that's Watkins Funeral Home on Riverdale Road. When they put the address on here, it's 6580 Church Street. If anybody needs to get the information, I have it here. 
Uh, the service is entrusted to Willie A. Watkins, Riverdale Chaplain. The family would ask you to keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers. And some of you might remember Jamila. She used to play the drums over here for a while. She hadn't been with us for a while, but keep this young lady in prayer, please. Any other announcements? All right. I'd like to thank all of you all for tolerating me this morning. I'd like to thank the technicians, as always, the musicians, the ushers, the young lady that lit the candle this morning. Thank you, Takesha. Um, I'd like to thank our secretary for preparing the program for this morning. It takes a team to get this service started. And we're going to keep it going. And I'm looking so forward to Folk Sunday. We're going to have all these people singing and coming back to the church on the Folk Sunday. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, let's get ready for our benediction. Don't forget to shake somebody's hand. Give them a hug on your way out. And wish them a blessed week. Let us stand for the benediction, please. As we get ready to go out, dear Lord, will you walk with us, Lord, in the darkness and bring the light, God, to him who is able to keep us from falling and to bring us faultless and joyful before his glorious presence. Oh, yes. To the only Oh, praise the Lord. Only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, might, and authority from all ages past, now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>